Welcome to the homework for lesson 11. This is module 3 of grade 1. Write your name here first. And this first page is going to be is going to have a lot of different possible answers depending on what you have to say for your own house or your own apartment or wherever it is you are where you are, you are right now. So you can use answer these questions and I'll just read to you the different categories and talk about how to answer them and the answers will be different for everybody so there's nothing right or wrong for these but here we'll say how many pets do you have that's what this one is how many pets do you have so that would include dogs cats fish ducks whatever maybe you live on a farm you could have you can wouldn't count all the livestock on the farm maybe just the ones you could think of as pets uh, how many toothbrushes are in your home? So maybe that's, you have your own. Um, then think about there's probably everybody has their own toothbrush. You might be able to find that maybe there's some extra toothbrushes that people have that are lying around that haven't been used yet. You might have more than, more toothbrushes than there are people in your family. So just count, go in the bathroom. See how many toothbrushes there are, count them, whatever you find, write it down, write it down here in this box. And how many pillows are in your home? You might think about this, the pillows are not always just on beds. If you have them, count the ones that are there on the, on the different beds in your, in your home. So house or apartment, wherever you are, if there's pillows, count them, but there's also pillows on couches too and sometimes on chairs. You can count those two. And then that's what you're going to write here for pillows. How many jars of tomato sauce are in your home? Well, you might not have any. Maybe don't cook at home. Maybe don't use tomato sauce. But if you like spaghetti, you probably have jars of tomato sauce in your home. Uh, so count those. Just find out where the uh, We'll find out where the where the, the food is. If you've got probably stuff that's on a shelf. And if you have any jars of tomato sauce, count them. If you don't have any jars, jars of tomato sauce, you could write a zero here if you don't have any. How many picture frames? And oh, here, let me clean this up. The last one is how many picture frames are in your home? So probably it's probably the same number of pictures. Now, if you live in a larger house and you have a basement, there's a bunch of stuff in storage, you don't have to really find every single picture frame that might be in your house. But you can go through the rooms and just count pictures that are hanging on the wall if you, if you have them. Now, not all posters have frames around them, but a lot of times pictures do. Now, there's picture frames that are hanging on walls, and there may be picture frames also that are on tables or desks. For like some like maybe a small picture that's on top of a desk, um, that you can count those too, and just go and count those and write down how many of those you find in your home right here, and then you're going to answer your own questions, and I'll read the questions to you so you can know what they are. How many? something do you have now it says here pick the item you have the most of so whatever number you have for these for your data whichever one had was the largest number that's going to be your question there so maybe you had more you had a lot of picture frames in your home and there was a lot more of those than anything else then that's what you would write was pick would be how many picture frames do you have and then for the next one is how many blank do you have pick the item that you have the least of. So if you didn't have any pets, maybe you had zero pets, then you would say, then right here, then pets is what you would write there. If that was what was the smallest number for the things that you counted. And then together, how many picture frames and pillows do you have? So to figure out that one, just look at your let me clean all this stuff up. 
picture frames and pillows. You're going to say how many picture frames there are and add it to the number of pillows. And whatever that is, that's what you're going to answer in this spot here, right? An addition sentence for it here, right? It's going to be picture frames plus pillows equals something. And then write and answer two more questions using the data you collected. So make up two more questions. Uh, they could be comparing questions like how many more toothbrushes are there than pets or are there more pillows than toothbrushes? How many more picture frames are there than pets? And those are kinds of questions you can just kind of make up. Don't make the question super hard um, because you're going to have to know what the answers are and be able to figure them out. But it's because it says write and answer two more questions. So here's a question, write down the question, and then the answer you can put here at the, in the space at the end. And for question B, that's your second question, whatever that one's going to be, you can write the answer for that one down here at the end. The next page, students voted on their favorite type of museum to visit. Each student could only vote once. Answer the questions based on the data in the table. So it looks like each, each stick person is a, uh, a student vote for favorite type of museum to visit. And there's a science museum, art museum, and history museum for the three different kinds of museums. And if I want to do, I can just count these. It might make it easier to compare. Uh, but if you like to count, then it may be easier to just count all the stick people for some of the questions. We'll get to them. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six stick people here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight stick people voted for art museum. And it looks the same. Science museum stick people look the same as history stick people. That was six. So how many students chose art museums? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. And how many students chose the art museum or the science museum so you're going to count all of those and you could just count the stick people one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fourteen students you could just count them all or you could add the six for the science you could add six plus eight and that would equal the fourteen we just counted or if you want to use the make 10 to add strategy, six, you need two to add to that eight to make a 10. So it's two and then the rest of the six would have to be a four. And here's your 10 and with four left over, 10 and four is 14. From this data, now we're on number seven here. From this data, can you tell how many students are in this class? Explain your thinking. Well, the thing is, each student could vote only once, so that really helps. Because if students can vote more than once, then you can't count the votes and say the votes and, and the student number of students are the same. But because we know that each student could vote only once, we could say that it's probably, and we're just going to assume that everybody voted. And we can say, yes, we can tell. So, yes. Each vote is one student. So we or I can count the votes. to tell how many and we could make a number sentence six plus eight plus six and and if you know your doubles two sixes is twelve so we're we'll looking at twelve plus eight and the the two from the twelve 
with the 8 we'll make a 10 and then the, there's 10 from the 12 two tens this is going to be 20 there are 20 students <laughs>